Hello, hello to my, all my wonderful partners and friends. I'm uh, here in Hawaii ministering, and I just want to talk to you today about the wonderful power of prayer. want to make sure you all can hear me, so just let me know you're on Facebook. Uh, just send me a quick comment that you can hear me. Those of you on Periscope cannot hear me because we're not allowing comments when I teach. I'm going to just wait till you all come on. And I really want to pray with you today. I've had such a mighty time in the Lord here. Last night's service was just glorious here in Maui. And then I was in Honolulu uh, the day before last. The power of God was just... I have never felt the power of God so strong in Hawaii. I'm telling you, things are really happening in, in, in Hawaii. It's really quite amazing. I, I've, I've not been here now three years. This is... It's been, been a long time since I've been here for ministry. Of course, Hawaii, you know, it's paradise. If, you'd, if you've not been here, it's time to come. But I, would, I really want to minister on the mighty and glorious part of prayer to you today because I really believe it's the key to victory. When we pray and seek the Lord on a daily basis, power will always be there. The power of the flesh is very deadly. And it is when we do not seek the Lord that the flesh comes back to life. And it can ruin us. And I just want to really let you know as my wonderful partner the importance of prayer daily. We need to hear about this because we all need to be reminded. I do too, believe me. i got to remind myself. Sometimes when I preach, I'm preaching to myself too. The key to victory, the key to peace, the key to joy in our life, the key to blessings in our home and family, the key to success in life and ministry is one thing, the presence of God. We cannot know the presence of the Lord if we ignore time with Him. It's just that's impossible. Really, we, we tie His hands. We literally limit Him when we do not seek Him. So think about the importance of God's power being with us daily. So Father, we come today in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray with your people, my wonderful partners today, Lord, for victory daily. And Lord, even as I minister the word, I pray that they will be blessed with the word and be encouraged today in the mighty name of Jesus. Meet every need, answer every prayer, in Jesus' name and God's sweet people said, Amen and Amen. And please just let me know by your comments. Okay, you can hear me. Wonderful. Tim is saying yes, so that's great. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 is, is, is what I want to start with. Call unto me, I will answer thee. What a mighty promise from, from the Lord. Call unto me, I will answer thee. And then he says, I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Think about when we call upon the Lord. You know, look, look, the, the, the enemy fights one area in our life, and this is it. He fights our prayer life because he knows the power that is in it. He, he knows the power that God will release in our life that will defeat his purpose. Satan's purpose will be destroyed and defeated when we pray. Call on to me, the Lord said. What an invitation. God did not say that to the angels. He said to you and I, call on to me. I will answer thee. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. What a powerful, what a powerful promise. Can we just thank him just for that? Lord, we thank you that you do answer prayer. We thank you. You respond and we thank you, Lord. You're the God of miracles. I give you praise. Hallelujah. I will answer thee. And then he said, I will show thee great and mighty things. What are those great and mighty things? Well, they're, they're, they are revealed when they come. We don't know what they are, but God knows. Great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So we don't even know the riches that he'll, that he'll pour on our lives, the miracles, the things we can't even think about. There's things we can't even pray for, nor, nor do we even have the faith for that God will do for us just to seek him. Psalm 34, 17 says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their trouble. Are you in trouble today? 
Maybe you are. Look what it says. The righteous cry. This is Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Not just half or 90%, all trouble. Maybe you, you, who knows what kind of trouble you're facing today. I'm giving you the answer from the Bible. The righteous cry, the Lord hears and delivers out of all trouble. Now, there are some people who just will not pray. They just don't want to. And, and, and look at, at the results. I want to look with you, if you don't mind turning with me to Job 21. When people don't pray, there's disaster. And it's, it's recorded in Job 21, beginning at verse 14. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of, of your ways. What, 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 what is the Almighty, they say? that we should serve him, and what profit should we have if we pray to him? Now this is what the wicked say. This is what those that hate God say. But look at the results. Verse 16, Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. The minute people don't pray, there's no counsel. There's no direction in their life. They're completely messed up. Chaos is all around them. Number two, how often... This is verse 17 of Job 21. How often is the candle of the wicked put out? And how often comes their destruction? So God says in verse 15 here that, the, that those that say, well, we don't really want to pray. Why should we pray? He says, because if they don't pray, there's no counsel. If they don't pray, there's no light. It says their candle is put out. Imagine walking in darkness because of no prayer. Who wants that? And then it says, how often their destruction comes on them. No protection. When people don't pray, there's no counsel. They, they don't know what they're doing. When they don't pray, there's no light. When they don't pray, no protection. Look what it says in verse 18. They are a stubble before the wind, as the chaff that the storm carries away. No preservation. Because when the wind comes and the blows off the chaff, that's not something that's preserved. So no prayer, no counsel. No prayer, no light. No prayer, no protection. No prayer, no preservation. Look what else it says. This is a scary one, verse 19. God layeth up his iniquity for his children. Wow. No forgiveness for them? Or their children will suffer as a result? Do you, do you know that when we don't pray, we bring judgment on our families? Please hear this. This is, I'm giving you the word. It says, God lays up his iniquity for his children. He rewards him and he will know it. God is talking about people who don't pray, that their children will bear the judgment. Not only are they judged, but their families are judged because of lack of prayer. When I pray as a daddy, I bring blessings on my children's lives and grandchildren. If I don't pray, they suffer for it too. So think about the, the, the disaster people bring because they just won't pray. They don't want to or they're too busy for it. Verse 20. Look at, look, look, look at this. <laughs> this is awesome and frightening to be honest with you. His eyes shall see his destruction. He shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. People don't pray, no mercy. There's no mercy on people's lives when they don't pray. And finally, verse 21, For what pleasure hath he in his house after him when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? No blessings. So, no, when people don't pray, no counsel. They don't pray, there's no light. They don't pray, there's no protection. They don't pray, there's no preservation. They don't pray, there's no forgiveness but judgment on them and family. They don't pray, <laughs> there's no mercy. And they don't pray, there's no blessings. Now, I just gave you the word of God from Job 21, beginning at verse 14, right through 21. Now, I, I, I'm giving you this to show you the importance of prayer. Prayer protects us from Satan's plan. The Bible says in Job 27, I want to read this to you. 
in Job 27, verse 10. And sometimes the enemy will plan to harm us. God will warn us of a couple days planning something. It's prayer that destroys his plan. And God sometimes, if someone is not praying, he'll warn us through a dream. Listen to this. Job 27, verse 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. Well, who is planning the, the evil? The, the, the enemy is planning the evil. A prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. That means he prays. But the simple pass on and are punished. Shall I read that again? I think I will. A prudent man, this is Job 27, 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hides himself. So sometimes you have a dream or you have a feeling of something bad coming or sometimes you have a dream of something that frightens you. What you, what you need to do is pray to stop it. Because if you don't pray, it's going to happen. It says the simple pass on and are punished. Here God in his love and mercy is warning us to, to pray and to seek him. And when we don't, well, it's, it's trouble. Job 28 has a lot to say also about this. Because when we seek the Lord, ah, such blessings. You know, in Job 28, 7, it says, There is a path which no fowl knoweth, which the, vult which the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden nor the fierce lion passed by it. There is a place where the enemy can, can, cannot find you. What is that place? It's God's presence. It's the hiding place. It's the secret place. That's why it's called the secret place, the hiding place. Because that's the place we're hiding in God. So when we are in that hiding place, the devil cannot find us. It's impossible for Satan to find you when you are hiding in God. Hallelujah. And then it says, and I love this, not only this hiding place is there for, for you, it says the vultures, I will not see it, that means demons, the lion's whelps have not trodden it, that's Satan's army, or the fierce lion, that's the devil himself, can't find you. Verse 9, he puts forth his hand, that's God, who puts forth his hand on the rock, overturns the mountains by the roots. He cuts out rivers among the rocks. His eye sees every precious thing. He binds the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid he brings forth. That's God rearranging everything for you, changing situations, taking mountains out of the way, taking obstacles out of the way. He puts forth his hand and overturns mountains. He cuts out rivers among the rocks. He brings out precious things in times of trouble. Think about prayer bringing such change in your life to where God literally rearranges everything. Now, there's one thing about God you, you need to understand. Psalm 45, 15 says he hides. Hides means it doesn't come quick. Hide means God waits to see are you serious about seeking him. Psalm 45, 15, Thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Why is he hiding? Because the, as we seek him, the flesh begins to vanish. The flesh and the part of the flesh begins to come under submission. Then God will appear because God cannot show up if the flesh is active. What does prayer do? What does waiting upon the Lord do? It kills the flesh. It crucifies the flesh. And the longer we wait, the less of the flesh remains. We'll say it again. The longer you and I wait in, uh, upon the Lord, the less of the flesh. And when the flesh is totally submitted, God shows up. Because it says, no flesh shall glory in his presence. Meaning the flesh cannot know the Lord. The anointing cannot come upon the flesh, says it says in Exodus 30. So there's, there's no anointing when the flesh is present and active. There's no presence of God when the flesh is active. 
And the flesh is active when there is no prayer. So, prayer destroys the flesh. And the scripture says in, in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, we're commanded to seek the Lord with all our hearts because half-hearted calls are not answered. Half-hearted calls are not answered. So today I encourage you to wait upon the Lord, to seek Him with all your heart till you find Him. I have to do that. I'll never forget when the Lord spoke to me years ago. Of course, it's in the scriptures. But I'll never forget one, one blessed day when, when I was struggling. The Lord said, Seek me with all your heart and you will find me. And in me, you'll find your liberty. Wow. That's what God said to me. But that's his word. Because it says, Seek him with all your heart and you will find him. He'll be found of you. And then the next verse in Jeremiah says, God will bring us out of captivity. What God said to me in my own heart is straight Bible. So today, seek Him. Don't let anything stand in the way. The glorious part of prayer is so easy to attain by simply waiting upon the Lord. That's all I wanted to say to you today. I'd like to continue, if I can, maybe day after tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be flying back home. But I want to pray with you right now. And I, I, I just wanted to talk to you as my partner, just to tell you the importance of prayer. Wonderful Jesus, I pray and I believe for miracles today. Wonderful Lord, I thank you for what you're about to do in people's lives, your people's lives, your sweet people's lives. And I agree with each one of them, Lord, today for miracles to be released not only miracles physically but miracles emotionally miracles spiritually miracles financially meet every need Lord I pray today in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus I give you all the praise and God's people said Amen Amen listen send me your prayer request because I really want to believe God with you and, and I want you to send your prayer requests to Pastor Benny at BennyHinn.org. That's Pastor Benny. I'm going to stand up there, uh, Tim, so you can stand with me. Yeah, just send me your prayer request to Pastor Benny at BennyHinn.org. I, I want to show you this beautiful view here of the Pacific Ocean. This is in Maui here. It's just so beautiful. And uh, pray the Lord one day will help you to come and see this beautiful place, a place of rest and relaxation and this is the this is the first day in a long time where I was just um, relaxing but I had to do uh, Facebook today and Periscope and talk to you my sweet wonderful partners about the good things of the Lord but remember what I told you today okay just seek him with all your heart go somewhere you know a place of quiet rest and uh, truly this one is one of them but I'm sure you have one close by you. Love you. Thanks for being my wonderful partners and friends. And I'll see you again, God willing, Wednesday. And by the way, this week, Pastor Chris will be with me this Friday from Africa. Oh, it's been powerful. Make sure to tune in and watch us, will you? Love you all. Shalom. Bye-bye.